This is your host, Dorothy Shelton. This video is all about the main characteristics of people who are ready to move on to the new earth and embrace Christ consciousness. This video gives a clear picture of those whose earthly cycles of lives are drawing to a close on 3D earth and those who still want to experience the duality game. It really doesn't matter if you belong to one group or the other because we are all one and we will all raise our consciousness at different times when we are ready. Towards the end of the video, the meaning of every life on earth really becomes clear. We belong to the most creative, advanced and courageous part of God. This message is a channeling from Yeshua, also known as Jesus, and he's being channeled by Pamela Kribbe. Thank you, Yeshua. I will link the article down below if you're interested in reading it for yourself. In speaking of this day and age as an age of transition, never forget that you are the master of your own reality. There is no such thing as a predestined plan or a cosmic power which overrules your individual soul's path or your individual power to create your own reality. It doesn't work that way. Every soul on earth will experience this transition in a way that fits their inner propensities. There are many realities. The reality you choose will answer your inner needs and desires. What makes this time, 1950 to 2070 approximately, special is that there are two different cycles of consciousness coming to an end. A personal cycle, or a set of personal cycles, and a planetary cycle. The completion of these cycles coincides so that one reinforces the other. For a part of humanity, the completion of their personal cycle of Earth lives is near. Most of the souls involved in this completion are light workers. To find out more about light workers, see the video which I will be posting at the end of this video. Here we would like to explain the nature of this personal cycle, typical hallmarks of the duality game, and characteristics that you're releasing duality and ascending to Christ consciousness. The earth lives you experience are part of a greater cycle of your soul. This cycle was designed to enable you to fully experience duality. You have within this cycle experienced what it is like to be male and female, to be healthy and ill, to be rich or poor, to be good and bad. In some lives you were intensely involved with the material world, being a farmer, worker, or craftsman, there have been more spiritually orientated lives, in which you carried within you a strong awareness of your spiritual origins. In those lives, you are often drawn to religious callings. Also, there have been lives in which you explored the worldly domain of power, politics, and so forth. Read more about personal karmic cycles in the article below. Your earthly cycle of lives ends when the game of duality no longer has a hold on you. It is essential to the dualistic game that you identify yourself with a particular position in the play field of polarities. You identify yourself with being poor or rich, famous or humble, man or woman, hero or villain. It really doesn't matter that much which part you are playing. As long as you feel one with the actor on the stage, duality still has a firm grip on you. This is not wrong, of course. In a sense, it was meant to be that way. You were meant to forget about your true self, to experience all the aspects of duality. You were meant to narrow your consciousness down to a particular role in the drama of earth life. And you played it well. You got so caught up with your roles 
that you totally forgot about the aim and purpose of going through this cycle of lives to begin with. You were so forgetful about yourself that you took the games and the dramas of duality to be the only reality there is. In the end, this made you very lonely and full of fear. Which is not surprising since the very game of duality, as noted in the previous section, is based on the elements of ignorance and fear. To understand the workings of duality in your everyday life, we would like to mention a few typical hallmarks of the duality game. Characteristics of the duality game Number 1. Your emotional life is essentially unstable. There is no emotional anchor present, since you are always in the up or down side of a particular mood. You are angry or forgiving, narrow-minded or generous, depressed or enthusiastic, happy or sad. Your emotions perpetually fluctuate between extremes. You seem to have only limited control over these fluctuations. Number two, you are intensely involved with the outer world. It is very important to you how other people judge you. Your self-esteem depends on what the outer world, society or your loved ones mirrors back to you about who you are. You are trying to live up to their standards of right and wrong. You are doing your very best. Number three, you have strong opinions about what's good and what's bad. Being judgmental gives you a sense of security. Life is so well organized when one divides actions, thoughts or people into right and wrong. Common to all these characteristics is that in all you do or feel, you are not really there. Your consciousness resides in the outer layers of your being where it is driven by fear-orientated patterns of thought and behavior. Characteristics of releasing duality Number 1. You listen to the language of your soul, which speaks to you through your feelings. Number 2. You act upon this language and create the changes your soul wishes you to make. Number 3. You value quiet time alone. For only in silence can you hear the whispers of your soul. Number four. You question the authority of thought patterns or rules of behavior which block the free expression of your true inspiration and aspirations. Your earthly cycle of lives draws to a close when your consciousness is able to hold all the experiences of duality in its hand while remaining centered and fully present. As long as you identify with one aspect of duality rather than another, with light as opposed to dark, with rich as opposed to poor, your consciousness is on a swing. Karma is nothing but the natural harmonizer of the swings in which your consciousness engages. You release your ties to the karmic cycle when your consciousness finds its anchor point in the motionless center of the seesaw. This center is the exit point for the karmic cycle. The predominant feeling tones in this center are stillness, compassion, and quiet joy. Greek philosophers had premonitions of this state, which they called ataraxia, imperturbability. Judgment and fear are the energies that most take you off center. As you release these energies more and more, you become more quiet and open inside. You truly enter another world, another plane of consciousness. This will be manifested in your outer world. It will often be a time of change and saying goodbye to aspects in your life that do not reflect you anymore. Great upheavals may occur in the areas of relationship and work. More often than not, your whole lifestyle turns topsy-turvy. 
This is only natural from our perspective, since inner changes are always the forerunner of changes in your outer world. Your consciousness creates the material reality you dwell in. It is always that way. What is the purpose of going through duality? Please do not underestimate the meaning of your lives on earth. You belong to the most creative, advanced and courageous part of God. You are explorers of the unknown and creators of the new. Your explorations through the realm of duality have served a purpose far beyond your imagination. It is hard to explain to you the deepest meaning of your travels, but we can say that you have created a new type of consciousness, one that did not exist previously. This consciousness, which I call the Christ consciousness, results from a spiritual alchemy. Physical alchemy is the art of transforming lead into gold. Spiritual alchemy is the art of transforming dark energy into the third energy, the spiritual gold present in the Christ energy. Please note that we do not say that the purpose is to transform dark into light or evil into good. Dark and light, evil and good, are natural opposites. They exist by the grace of one another. True spiritual alchemy introduces a third energy, a type of consciousness which embraces both polarities through the energies of love and understanding. The true purpose of your journey is not to have light conquer dark, but to go beyond these opposites and to create a new type of consciousness which can maintain unity in the presence of both light and dark. We will explain this rather difficult point by means of a metaphor. Imagine you're a deep sea diver in search of a pearl. Time and again, you dive into the ocean to find this particular pearl, which everyone talks about, but nobody has actually seen. Rumors go that not even God, the chief diver, has never touched the pearl. Diving into the ocean is full of perils, since you can get lost or go too deep to catch your breath in time. Still you persist and you dive into this ocean time and again, for you are determined and inspired. Are you insane? No, you are explorers of the new. The secret is, in the process of finding the pearl, you are creating it. The pearl is the spiritual gold of the Christ consciousness. The pearl is you, transformed by the experience of duality. What you have here is a true paradox. In exploring the new, you are creating it. You have become the pearl of God's creation. God had no other way of doing it. For what you were attempting to find did not exist yet. It had to be created by you. Why was God so interested in creating something new? Let us state this in as simple a way possible. First, God was entirely good. There was goodness everywhere and all around. In fact, because there was nothing else, things were kind of static. His creation lacked aliveness. It lacked the possibility of growth and expansion. You might say it was stuck. To create change, to create an opportunity for movement and expansion, God had to introduce an element in his creation that was different from the goodness that pervaded everything. This was very hard for God, for how can you create something that is not you? How can goodness create badness? It can't. So God had to come up with a trick, so to speak. This trick is called ignorance. Ignorance is the element that opposes goodness. It creates the illusion of being outside goodness, of being separated from God. 
Not knowing who you are is the incentive behind change, growth, and expansion in your universe. Ignorance breeds fear. Fear breeds the need to control. The need to control breeds the struggle for power, and there you have all the conditions for evil to flourish. The stage has been set for the battle between good and bad. God needed the dynamics of opposites to get his creation unstuck. It may be very hard for you to comprehend in view all the suffering caused by ignorance and fear, but God put great value on these energies since they provided him with a way to go beyond him or herself. God asked you, the ones that belong to the most creative, advanced and courageous part of herself, to take the veil of ignorance, in order to experience the dynamics of opposites as thoroughly as possible. You were temporarily soaked in forgetfulness about your true nature. You consented to take this plunge into ignorance. But this fact was overlaid by the veil of forgetfulness as well. So now you often curse God for being in the situation you're in. The hardships, the ignorance. And we understand, in essence though, you are God. God is you. Despite of all the troubles and sorrows, deep down within you, there is still a sense of wonder and excitement about living in duality, about experiencing and creating the new. This is God's original excitement, the reason God started with his journey through you in the first place. When you started out on your journey, you faced evil, fear, ignorance, with only a vague memory of the good or home in your mind. You started to battle fear and ignorance while longing for home. However, you will not return home in the sense of returning to a state in your past. For creation has changed because of your journey. The end of your journey will be that you have become larger than good and evil, light and dark. You will have created a third energy, the Christ energy which embraces and transcends both. You will have expanded God's creation. You will be the new creation of God. God will have gone beyond him or herself when the Christ consciousness is fully born on earth. The Christ consciousness did not exist before the human experience. The Christ consciousness is the consciousness of one who has gone through the multi-layered experience of duality, has come to terms with it, and emerges on the other side. He will be the inhabitant of the new earth. This one will have let go of duality. She will have recognized and embraced her own divinity. He will have become one with his divine self. But his divine self will be different than before. It will be deeper and richer than the consciousness from which it was born. Or one could say, God will have enriched him or herself by having gone through the experience of duality. This story is simplified and distorted as anything we say is distorted by the illusions of time and separation. These illusions have served a valuable purpose. But the time has come to go beyond them. Please try to feel the energy behind our words, stories and metaphors. This energy is in a sense your own. It is the energy of your future Christ itself that is speaking through me, Yeshua. We are waiting for you to join us. Releasing the grip of duality takes time. Unraveling all the layers of darkness or unconsciousness, is a gradual process. Yet once you embark upon this road, the road to the inner self, you are slowly distancing yourself from the game of duality. When you have tasted the true meaning of ataraxia, the turning point is taken. When you have felt the silent yet all-pervading joy of simply being with yourself, you will know 
that that is what you've been looking for all along. You will go inward time and again to experience this peace inside. You will not shy away from worldly enjoyment, but you will have found an anchor of divinity within yourself, and you will experience the world and all its beauty from that state of bliss. Bliss never resided in material things to begin with. It resides in the way you experience them. When there is peace and joy in your heart, the things and people you meet will give you peace and joy. In this day and age, a certain group of souls is preparing itself to step up the karmic cycle. However, it is not just a group of human souls that is now reaching the end of a transformative personal cycle. The very earth on which you live is undergoing a deep and thoroughgoing transformation. A planetary cycle is coming to an end as well. This era is so special because of these two cycles coinciding. 